Hey guys, today we are coming to you from Ajiji, Jalisco, an easy day trip or a weekend trip from Guadalajara. Ajijic is a small town on the edge of Mexico's largest lake, Lake Chapala. And over the years, it's become really popular with American and Canadian retirees and expats. We'll be here for the weekend and we really want to find out why it is that so many foreigners flock to Ajijic. Ajijic is an easy one hour bus ride from Guadalajara. You can easily do a day trip or make a weekend out of it. All you need to do is get yourself to the Antigua Central de Autobuses, aka the old bus station. Just walk into the terminal and look for the right stall, which will look like this. The particular stall that takes you to Ajijic and Chapala is located towards the end of the terminal. Uh, just look for the signs that say Guadalajara, Chapala and those will take you to both Chapala, Ajijic and other surrounding areas. There are two tickets that you can buy, Servicio Regular, which is regular service. They run about every 15 minutes. And then there's a, a Servicio Directo, which is a direct service to Ajijic. These Servicio Plus tickets do run you 60 pesos per person and they run about every 30 minutes. So they give you your ticket, tell you the time you're leaving, give you your bus number and you're on your way. So we hopped off the bus, made our way down to have some breakfast near the placita. After breakfast, we checked into our Airbnb, which turned out to be the best valued Airbnb we've ever booked for under $50. We paid $38 for our Airbnb that we're sitting at right now. Yeah, granted it's a private room Airbnb, but you have access to the kitchen, la cocina, they label it, the cantina, which happens to be an honor bar. Yeah, it's great. Um, she has like tons of tequilas out that you can taste, beer in the fridge, and you just drop some pesos into the jar when you're finished. Yeah, and we knew that it did include breakfast, so you do have access to coffee in the morning, and there's yogurt and cereals. So that part we knew was gonna be great, but this honor bar is top notch. Yeah, and just the amount of detail that has gone into this place. Pictures, the decor, it's amazing. And we will definitely link this Airbnb below. Cheers. So now that we're fed, checked into our Airbnb, and have a little bit of tequila in our stomach, I think we're ready to explore Ajijic. The Malecón offers views of Lake Chapala, which is the largest lake here in Mexico. And as you make your way down to the lake, you get to stroll down these beautiful cobblestone roads, admire all the street art, and just look at the awesome architecture. So one of the biggest benefits of it being a huge expat and retiree community is that they actually have their own news forum, Ajijic Ni... Ajijic? Ajijic <laughs> News. And they post tons of events, such as this one right behind us, the Festival Navideño, which is just a Christmas market. And we were doing some research and we found out that this was going on, so that's just an added plus. They do other things like movies by the lake and art exhibits, so you get a lot of information. It's pretty cool. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our way down and check it out, because it is kind of hard to get into the festive spirit here in sunny 75 degree weather. So let's go see what this festival Navideña is all about. <laughs> guys like so so a lot of like this area is big on their handcrafts and I'm so impressed and I'm gonna want to buy everything but we got to get out of here
spent the entire day here on the Malecon. Yeah. After the Christmas market, we just took a stroll down the Malecon. Eventually ended up getting ourselves a drink and just watched the sunset. Man, that sunset from the Malecon was awesome. Totally Epic. Recommended. Yeah, and what's cool is that if you find the skate park, uh, just like watching the sunset, overlooking the skate park, the skaters are kind of just like flying up in the air, so they're like silhouettes. It's just a unique sunset. So when you're here in the Malecon, it's cool just to people watch, uh, get some snacks, enjoy some live music going on, and it's a it's just a really good place to enjoy the afternoon. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our way back into the town and try to find ourselves some food. Mm -hmm. All right guys, so in all honesty, we were walking back towards the Airbnb so I could get a sweater because I'm a little chilly, but we happened upon this restaurant. It just looks like a family-run open kitchen type of restaurant. It smells amazing. There are tons of people in there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab us some food in here. Um, so let's check it out. We have no idea what to expect because we literally just passed it on our way this way. So let's see what kind of yummy, delicious goodness is in there because it smells amazing. Let's go. So first we got some drinks, some horchata and some pacifico, a bit random, but to each their own. Joanne ordered the tacos dorados de carne, which is just a fried taco, so hard shell taco with, uh, car with meat. And then I got the pozole grande with double meat. It's a big bowl of homily soup with a lot of meat. So we're excited. It looks like a real local hot spot. This place is packed. And initially they don't even give out menus. Uh, we asked for a menu and this is what they gave us. And my curiosity got the best of me. So I looked up this place on Google. It's got a pretty good rating, but it's funny because uh, some of the comments are like, uh, don't even ask for a menu because they don't have one. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because that's how local this place is. People are used to what they're getting. Hola. Ah, gracias. aquí. Un pozole grande? Sí, aquí. Gracias. Wow. Ahorita le traigo la verdura. Gracias. Oh, guys, this is the pozole grande con doble carne. It's more meat than pozole, which is, in my opinion, awesome. Wow. That is just so warming. Eat and she's stealing my food. Freaking bomb. <laughs> solid. <sighs> so solid. Yeah. Just home cooked meal right there, for sure. And we decided to call it an early night so we can get up for the sunrise, which of course we missed, like always. Just by a little. Just a little bit. It's still really nice though. So we kind of wanted to get a feel for the town when it was basically silent. So we did take some time in the streets, kind of just strolling through. It is so beautiful, so magical right now in the morning. And then we got here to the lake. And it's so gorgeous. And of course we would run into our Airbnb host. <laughs> She's so great. So she actually told us that we got really lucky and this is a very clear morning on the lake. Sometimes it gets a little hazy, but I could imagine that's just as beautiful as well. So we can totally tell why this is one of the biggest draws to Ajijic, this yeah. lake here. Can you imagine just waking up every morning, coming to the Malecon and having a stroll? That's the life. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do what the locals do and take a stroll down this Malecon.
a stroll around the streets so we could get a better look at Ahiki's quiet side. Um, let me tell you, it's beautiful here. Yeah, I think both ways. Uh, yesterday was great with all the stands set up, the Christmas stands, the Placita, uh, tons of people. Uh, I think both ways are great ways to enjoy it. Yeah, so you got a little bit of both. <laughs> this place, Cafe Grano, was right by the church. I was skimming through their best of the best of Lake Chapala, and this was number one, and their coffee is good. So even though we did stop for coffee, we do want to try more places around town, so we're going to go find ourselves maybe the best of the best breakfast places. <laughs> uh, we're not sure yet, but next up is breakfast. Oh, Cheers. Love breakfast. So guys, we went ahead and stuck to the list and we found a best economical eatery and that was Chile Verde. Wowzers. I ordered the molletas con carne with meat and topped with an egg. Mm. Perfect combo. Bread, beans, steak, and eggs. So I really want to say breakfast is my favorite meal when eating in Mexico, but everything's just so good. <laughs> but we're done here and we're going to go ahead and head back to our Airbnb. Um, we have about an hour and a half before we need to check out. So we're going to kind of take some advantage of the fact that we have a full kitchen there and a really nice workspace. So we're going to do a little bit of work, catch up on some emails, um, maybe edit a few pictures real fast, and then we will be off to the next part of our adventure. Cheers, guys. So we had breakfast, checked out of our Airbnb, hopped on a bus, and 20 minutes later we hopped off in San Juan. San Juan is known for its thermal spas. There's uh, three well-known ones here, and that's our next activity. We're gonna try to hop in a spa. All right, guys, so we went ahead and chose Thermal Cosala, which is actually one of the hotel spas hotel slash spas right here up along the lake. So we paid 480 per person, uh, so less than 30 bucks a person, which is pretty great if you ask me. And it's right by the lake. Uh, we did a tour of the facility before we actually paid for it, so you can go ahead and check it out for yourselves to see if it's something you like um, before you actually pay for it. And this one is actually adults only, so we get our adult experience here whatever that means so we're gonna go ahead and head into the locker rooms now um change into some swim gear and head out and let you guys see what it's all about so let's go <laughs> so we're all suited up made our way down to the grassy area where they have lounge chairs and tables and umbrellas they also have restaurant service so the waiter comes around and takes your order if you want to order something to drink or eat so it is a very beautiful here with the green lawn right up against Lake Chapala. But the most important thing is we need to go test out the facilities that they offer. So there are a couple different kinds of baths. They have a jacuzzi, a big pool in the middle. Um, so we're going to go test them out and see if we can get the real spa experience. Uh, we'll be back to you guys in a few with our review of the place. I guess it's time for an update slash review of Thermal Cosala. So it was very relaxing and I did find myself in a state of relaxation that a spa is supposed to inspire. And it was a very nice experience. Personally, I really enjoyed it. But 
It was lacking in some areas. They are working on another pool, oh, which is which is the wine pool. Which would be so exciting. So they are under construction, so that kind of a little bit throws yeah. like the whole thing off. You have to um, walk around the construction area. But when it's open, I'm sure that'll be an added plus to it. And also the other part that was lacking for me was when you do first enter, they show you where the locker rooms are but they are not at all what you would expect from a spa service. Extremely basic. Um, the lockers you do have to rent and pay for, which I mean is fine, but um, there's no towels provided. There's no sandals. sandals. So you are walking around in dirt in some points and then you get into a pool, which is probably not the best idea. They would benefit more from having some kind of slippers. A plus, I would say, are the steam rooms. Those are pretty cool. My favorites were the steam room and the oatmeal bath. That was definitely unique, yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Overall, pretty enjoyable. I yeah. think we're just going to um, enjoy this pool a little more. Maybe go get a couple of refreshments because they do offer a restaurant service. And maybe a snack. Maybe jump back in again. Not sure. But we need to get out of the sun because we don't even have sunscreen. <laughs> we're cooking. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make our way back to our table and enjoy some bevies. bevies. Now we've made it back out to the main road and we're waiting on a bus back to Guadalajara. We just know it passes every hour and we don't know exactly when the last one passed, so we might be waiting a while. Unfortunately, we did not get seats on this bus, so we'll be standing for about an hour. Eh, could be worse. Javier ended up stuck over there. Three hours later. So we can tell you what not to do. <laughs> and that was hop on any bus that's coming. Um, so of course there are three different buses that you could jump on. You could jump on the local bus, the Chapala bus that takes you from where we were to Guadalajara, but with every single stop in between. Or you can take Chapala Plus, which takes you directly there. And that would have taken exactly one hour. This ride took us more than two hours, that's for sure. So um, we are back here in Guadalajara. Ajijic was amazing. Totally can see why it's such a charming town that everyone is moving to. <laughs> so um, yeah, we totally enjoyed it. But we are exhausted, so we're gonna call it a close on today's vlog. And we'll see you guys in the next one. But of course, you know what to do. Um, if you liked our channel, give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. Ching! And then hit the notification bell so you get uh, notifications every time we post. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Laters. <laughs> Delirious. <laughs> I don't know. It's not even that late. I'm just ranting, talking. Okay, bye. Bye. Really, bye.